Whew, all right. This has a good chance of being an unmitigated cry fest disaster. So, I uh, apologize in advance. Cried during the video, cried during Seth's talk, cried during my talk. Uh, what you didn't know is, uh, brother, I, I came here tonight just to, to talk about me the whole time, man. Hey, it's my night, man, along with the other inductees, yeah. Hey, I came here to talk about me all night, so yeah, everybody get comfortable. We haven't been here very long, have we? Um, no, I really would, uh, I really would like to just take a few moments and, uh, if you'll indulge me, uh, I just kind of, I sent that text to him. Actually, when I got the call uh, from Mitch, um, I told you. I got the call from Mitch. I turned to my wife. I said, I'm going into the UK Athletics Hall of Fame. And uh, my career has been such a neat journey. Uh, this does feel like uh, a good way to cap it. From a, from a playing standpoint, from a, you know, a competitor on the field. There's no higher honor to me. I told some people, you know, doing some interviews when we got inducted, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, if I had had a good enough, I had an NFL career that I'm very proud of, and I had a lot of success with a lot of different teams, and I played my role to my fullest at each of them, I'm not going into Canton, and that's okay. But even if I was, I don't know that it would be any better to me than this right here. I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So if you'll indulge me just a few moments down memory lane, I'd just like to share a couple of, of my memories that I have over the years with you guys. Uh, I remember back before all this, these beautiful facilities that surround football here, I remember tossing the ball with Dad and Seth on a grassy knoll over here somewhere down Alumni. And I remember walking to the to Commonwealth, going in the stadium, and you know, I remember being in the crowd for, for Couch to Yeast. I remember in fourth grade, after our football season ended, I was a quarterback back then, and I remember in fourth grade, I remember my coach, Ernie Hatfield, at our banquet we had in like the back of Gaddy Town. <laughs> I remember him saying, Jacob, if you want to, you'll be the next Tim Couch. I didn't play quarterback for too much longer after that, so I didn't get to be the next Tim Couch, but, but I always remember him saying that. I remember as we grew into the high school years, I remember we had great success in high school, 58 and 2, Seth, not 48 and 2, 58 and 2. 58 and 2 and four state titles. I was fortunate to be a part of some really good teams and guys that flat out worked every year to be great and to go do it again. I remember every Friday night after big wins, I remember Saturday mornings getting up and, and watching college game day. And I'll come back to that here in a minute. I got real excited, Eric, when you said college game day. I, basketball, oh, well, because we had a cool college game day moment against Florida uh, that I'm going to come back to. But I remember one of those uh, Friday nights, we got, we, we were actually uh, 47 and 0, and we were really close to the state record for wins, consecutive wins. We had never lost a game in high school uh, my senior year, and we got beat by our crosstown rivals at Anvil. And at that same time, I was in the period of my life when I had made my decision that I was going to choose Kentucky. I had been offered a scholarship, and uh, as Seth said, the team was under probation at the time. I had other offers, and I kind of felt like, even though I knew that I wanted to be a cat, I felt like it was sort of I was trying to be smart, you know, I was trying to not just make a rash decision. You know, I had offers from other schools with unbelievable academics and good football programs and all that stuff, and I thought, you know what, I need to make the, take my time and make the right decision. Well, at the same time, Kentucky didn't have many scholarships, and I'll never forget the day that uh, my high school coach, Chuck Smith, came into the cafeteria and got me out of lunch and said, Jacob, Kentucky just called, and they're going to have to pull your scholarship. And I remember walking out of the lunchroom and going to sit on the bench. Thankfully, the rest of the high school was in lunch, basically, because I sat there and cried on that bench as a high school senior. 
And I remember thinking, you've got to pull it together, man. People are getting ready to, like, walk by here. <laughs> and, and I remember as time went by, some things changed with the coaching staff. Uh, that coach left, and, and I never, I always understood, you know, that th they recruited me very hard to come here. But the limitations were what they were. Well, I'll never forget also that moment when my journalism teacher came into class and said, Jacob, there's going to be a new coach at Kentucky. And I said, what? He said, yep. Coach Morris is taking a job at Baylor. And I thought, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing. But if there's ever been a chance, maybe this is it. And I remember calling Mitch Barnhart as a high school senior and saying, Mr. Barnhart, I know we don't know each other. Assuming you don't get very many calls from high school kids. But I just want you to know that whoever you hire to be the head coach, if you could just please pass along the word that if they offer me a scholarship, I will be coming to Kentucky. And I'll never forget the day, a couple weeks later, when my high school coach came and got me out of class again. And he said, Jacob, Rich Brooks just called. He offered you a scholarship to play football at Kentucky. And I went ahead and said yes for you. <laughs> and, I, was, I was thankful for that. I'll never forget my freshman year here when, uh, you know, we had a, I had a rough couple of years those first few years. During those years, the work was still being put in. A young man, a, a, a senior leader at the time, named Tommy Cook. We were running stadium stairs with Mark Hill, and stadium stairs were not fun. But I was one of the, I, I never minded it, you know. I knew that, it, you know, when we did things that everyone hated, I always liked those things. I knew the purpose behind them. Well, one day we were doing them, and I'll never forget this moment. Tommy Cook, in the midst of terrible a terrible season before it and probably a terrible season after this. We were running stadium stairs and I thought I was working really hard. We get, you go one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, and then at the very top, it's weird where there's a rail there and you're like right at the first, first level kind of concourse. And we got up there and at that top, I would hit the stair and I'd, I'd skip one. I'd go up two and I kind of use the rail, propel myself to get around the next corner and start on the way back down. And I'll never forget, I was doing that one time, and I used the rail to propel myself, and Tommy Cook grabbed the back of my shirt and said, hey, hey, freshman, don't ever touch that rail again. That's the type of guys we had here trying to change that program. I never touched that rail again either. Never touched that rail again. I remember the work we put in. I remember the frustrations that we had. I remember the heartbreaks that we had. I remember a lot of good times. I remember we got beat... 49 to nothing by LSU our, my junior year. And I remember two weeks later, there we are playing Georgia, who we haven't beat in forever. We're playing them at home after getting beat 49 to nothing by LSU. And I had the nerve to stand up in front of the team before the game and say, we are going to win this game. Prepare your minds for it. And we did win that game. We did win that game, and I remember one of my closest friends, a high school teammate of mine, he came up to me after the game. For those of you who have never seen that clip, uh, I think Mitch and I have like a five-minute hug on the field. I'm, I got hair everywhere, and I'm, I'm just bawling my eyes out on the field. I cried a lot, of, a lot of tears on that field, but I was bawling my eyes out after that game. And one of my high school teammates came up, and he said, he said, man, what happened, man? Why are you crying like that after the game, man? He said, did you not think you could win? And I told him, no, I was crying like that because I knew we could win. Because I knew we could win. And we finally showed everybody else. We finally showed everybody else. The Tennessee game that year, or the next year, our senior year, let me, let me back up. We had college game day come. I want to tell a quick story about that, too. Before I came to Kentucky, my wife's family and I were down in Florida. My girlfriend at the time, we were down in Florida. We went to an ESPN zone down there at Disney World. I don't know if you've been to the ESPN zone down there. It may not even exist anymore. I don't know. Back then, I saw this keychain for college game day. I told you I used to watch on Saturday mornings. Well, I saw this keychain for college game day. And at that time, 
Kentucky was so far away from going to college game, you know, being on college game day, it was just ridiculous. I bought that keychain, and anybody, I had it on my keys for the next five years. And anybody that ever asked me about it, I told them I have that keychain on here until we bring college game day to Kentucky. I got a lot of weird looks, a lot of weird looks, even from friends and family, even from friends and family. And I'll be darned, our senior year, if we didn't beat number one ranked LSU, who went on to win the national championship, and then bring college game day to Kentucky against Florida later that season. And the things that my teammates and I were able to do for the fan base was one of the most special things for me. And that day, that day was truly special to me. I'll share one story with you from later on that year. We played Tennessee. Now, we've talked about it ad nauseum. I'm a Kentucky boy, man. I mean, I just, we grew up down the road, been Kentucky my whole life, literally in every game I've ever played against my brother. I've been Kentucky, you know? Well, one of the things I really wanted to do is beat Tennessee, right? I really wanted to end that streak back then. Well, that year, uh, we got beat 52 to 50 in four overtimes, as many of you well remember. And after that game, that was senior night. That was my final game in the stadium. After that game, I couldn't, I couldn't leave. We were supposed to be having a party for me at, back at our house in Danville, and I just couldn't leave the stadium. I had to go back out there one more time. So I went back out there. After everybody had left, every single person was gone except my family waiting in the tunnel, who I still apologize to this day. They had to wait this long. But everybody was gone, and I walked back out the tunnel, because I didn't want it to be over. I didn't want it to be my last time out there. And I walked back out the tunnel, and I just knelt down on the grass. It was grass back then. Knelt down on the grass, and again, I just cried right there. Just sobbed. And I'll never forget standing up, turning around, and there was somebody left. It was our equipment manager, Tom Kalinowski. And that, he just bear hugged me. And we had like another five-minute embrace right there in the, in the tunnel on the first few feet of grass. And I, and I never forgot that because over the years, that was one of the most heartbreaking defeats I've ever had as a player. And over the years, I look back on that memory and that moment and those tears I shed on the field that day. And every time I think of it, I get more and more proud of the way we played. I'm so glad that in that little video clip they just showed, they showed this catch. I have hardly ever seen it, but I think I made the best catch of my career in that game. Eric Berry, perennial all-pro safety, was intercepting a ball, and somehow, I don't know, I couldn't really jump that good. I jumped over him, reached up, he had it. I brought it back over his head and rolled down to the ground. I think it was the best catch I ever made. So when I look back, even on the heartbreaks that we had here, I'm so stinking proud of them, man. I'm so stinking proud of them. I'm so proud of the way we played, even in the heartbreak games. That is my daughter, by the way. <laughs> that is my daughter. She's like, wrap it up, Dad. <laughs> wrap it up. When I got to go play in the pros, I did uh, get to spend a lot of my career with a guy named Peyton Manning, and it was a true pleasure. It, we got off on a little bit of a rocky start. He, you know, he was a volunteer, so I kind of hated him for most of my life until, <laughs> until the Colts drafted me. And then, you know, he, he invited us over to his house. So about four months after that game I just told you about, right, that heartbreaking game, he invited us over to his house. We had the draft. It was about seven or eight of us he invited over, all the draftees. It was a, like a really great uh, gesture, right? And I thought, man, just, Jacob, just go in there and act normal, you know? I mean, just... <laughs> Don't be stupid. Just go in there and, and try to represent yourself kind of decent. So I walked in the door. He met me in the foyer. He shook my hand. He said, nice to meet you, Peyton Manning. It's great to have you as a Colt. As we're shaking hands, he said, boy, man, y'all uh, sure did come close, but looks like that streak's going to live on another year. <laughs> I kid you not. I kid you not. I'm still shaking his hand. I didn't think. It was just automatic. It just came out, I got so mad, I turned red, shaking his hand, I said, I don't joke around about Kentucky, Tennessee. <laughs> True story. He was like, whoa. <laughs> <I> was like, <laughs> and 
I went in the bathroom, I texted my wife, I was like, pack your bags, babe, we're cut. <laughs> it's over, it's been a good four weeks. It's over. Just moved up here. It's over. But you know what? I think he respected me for it. We developed such a friendship over the years, and, uh, and I think he respected me for it. But, but there could be nothing more true than what I responded to him with. There could be nothing more true than what I responded to him with. I want to close. i got to thank a few people. i got to thank a few people. Mitch, I wouldn't be here without you. would have never been here without you. We, from that moment through the years of trying to get the program turned around, you've meant more to me, not only as an athletic director, as a mentor, as a leader, as a friend. Thank you for everything you've, you've done for me. Thank you for everything you do for this university. Rich Brooks certainly wouldn't be here without Rich Brooks for everything he did for our team, for me, for this university, for our football program. Steve Ortmeyer's here tonight. I moved from uh, receiver to tight end. The first tight end meeting I ever had was in Steve Ortmeyer's meeting room. I remember that practice, going out, putting my, my hand down in a three-point stance for the first time, thinking, I've got to block some big boys, you know? <laughs> Steve Ortmeyer helped me get there. He helped me get there. Joker Phillips was my position coach as a receiver and my offensive coordinator, and he helped me on my journey. Mark Hill was my strength coach. He didn't teach me how to run them stadium stairs right, but he, Tommy Cook corrected it, and Mark was great my whole career. It took a lot to get, get this ready for the NFL, and he helped me get there. Andre Woodson, Wes Woodyard, Keenan Burton, Dickie Lyons, Raphael Little, Eric Scott, just Braxton Kelly, the list of teammates goes on and on and on, and I can't even mention them all, but we had some real good players back 10, 11, 12 years ago, and, and we had some good teams, and I'm thankful to all of those guys. I'm thankful to all those guys. It was hard for me sometimes because this meant so much to me. It always meant so much to me, and sometimes you'd have teammates, you just felt like it didn't mean as much. Guys that weren't from Kentucky or guys that just you just didn't know if they cared like you cared. Maybe they were focused on the NFL or whatever. I'm telling you what. I didn't have those guys. Our junior and senior year, it came, it, it, it came, over, it came across to me that guys cared like I did. Those guys cared like I did. So I'm really thankful for that. I'm really thankful for that. Uh, my dad. My dad, if I'm humble, it's because of my dad. I'll never forget the day my mom told me. She said, my dad's been working the same job at Kentucky Utilities, give or take. I'm not trying to take anything away there. For like 30 years, I don't know. He's my right-hand man on the farm right now. My mom told me one day, she said, your dad could have gone as far up the chain as he wanted, as far up the ladder as he wanted. And you know what? He turned them all down so he could be home at 5 o'clock every day to play in the backyard. Another guy, I was at a function last night speaking, and he came up to me and he said, he worked with my dad. He said, you know what? There was a time when your dad was going to Boyle County football games on Friday night, and he was going to watch your brother play Western Kentucky traveling to wherever on Saturdays, and then he was going to watch you catch touchdowns in the NFL on Sundays, and then he was back at work on Monday, and somebody asked him how his weekend was, and he would say it was real good. <laughs> Had a good weekend. And that's my dad. My mom, I don't, forgive me for this, I don't know, but I don't know, she used to always do this thing where I'd like be walking out to the game on Friday night to get in my car, and she'd be standing up on the porch. She'd be like, go get them, honey. Here's your twizzle fingers or something. I don't know what that ever was, <laughs> but I'm thankful for it, Mom. I don't know. She's like, dazzle them, baby. Go, go spin and go. I'm like, Mom, I, I owe you some credit for that. I know I do. Whatever that was, I'm thankful. No, my mom is an amazing woman. She's an amazing woman. My brother, Seth, my sister, Sarah Jane, um, I love you guys, and I'm so thankful. Seth, thank you for, for everything over all the years. My in-laws have been a part of this journey from the very beginning. I met my wife in preschool. Our parents live less than a mile apart. My in-laws traveled to every UK football game we had. Probably spent way more time with my family than they ever bargained for, but... They've been here from the beginning, and I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for it. My kids, Luke, Lila, and Ella, they weren't a part of this UK journey. They were a part of our professional journey. But I'm hopeful that by the way that we live our life, they know what this university means to us. 
And uh, you guys are my inspiration every day I wake up. The best blessing in my life. And lastly, to my wife Allison, there are literally no words that I can say to you that would tell you what you mean to me. This journey that we've been on together has been something that means I could not have ever done it without you. And I would not have wanted to do it without you. I love you and I'm thankful that you're my wife. I'm thankful that we had a crush on every other kid in the whole school from preschool to elementary to middle school and then in high school we found each other. <laughs> and you were the manager with the water and it was really hot that summer. I'm so thankful for you. I'm truly thankful for you. To close, what I said in the beginning is true. There's no higher award that I have ever been given, and I don't think a higher award that I could be given regarding my athletic career than this right here. To join a group like this and the ones that have come before us. For this Kentucky boy, it truly does mean a lot. Go Cats, and thank you very much.